हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ ब्रेड मेकिंग एज वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द हिस्ट्री एंड इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट ऑफ अवर ब्रेड मेकिंग नाउ वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द इंग्रेडिएंट्स व्हिच आर बीन यूज्ड फॉर ब्रेड मेकिंग इट इज ऑफन सेड दैट गुड फूड नीड गुड ब्रेड एंड टू मेक गुड ब्रेड वन नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड द ब्रेड कंपोनेंट्स दैट मींस द इंग्रेडिएंट्स एंड द फंक्शंस एंड द रोल्स ऑफ ब्रेड मेकिंग has to be known by the baker in this session we will discuss about the functions and roles of ingredients which are here used in bread making these are the following ingredients used in bread making and each one have some role and function in developing a good flavorful tasteful bread the ingredients are like flour water sugar yeast salt oil milk and egg and yes bread improver we will discuss all the ingredients in brief in our coming slides flour flour is the most important ingredient in bread making and wheat flour is the most used for bread making next to wheat flour we have rye is the most popular flour which is used for bread making in some of the countries most flours contain all the food necessary for the fermentation of yeast the most important and essential food is dextrose sugar which is basically glucose which is directly fermented into carbon dioxide by a group of enzymes in yeast called gemmes wheat flour contains both soluble and insoluble protein and the protein along with other components join when water is added two of the insoluble protein namely glutamine and gliadin join in the presence of water forming a tough somehow somewhat rubbery material called gluten glutamine gives solidity to the product which is gliadin is the binding impairing the soft sticky characteristics to gluten and why only flour because it's act act as a binding agent and yes it build structure and give volume to the product the next ingredient is yeast it act as a leavening agent in bread making yeast is a living microorganism the one used for bread making is known as baker yeast or scientifically as saccharomyces cerevisiae it is available in three variety we have available fresh dry one and instant type of yeast in the market because yeast contain enzymes which are capable of changing cane sugar sucrose into fructose and glucose and malt sugar maltos into glucose almost any sweet material except milk sugar will act as a source of food material to the yeast like all living in living things yeast can only work well between certain temperature the ideal and optimum temperature for the working of yeast is between 78 to 82 degree fahrenheit but above 140 degree fahrenheit the protein in yeast get coagulated the cell ceases to its function and then die yeast grow better in slightly acidic medium the reaction which take place over a combination of yeast and sugar is converting sugar into co2 and alcohol it gives volume and softness and yes the carbon dioxide trapped within the tiny bubbles and result in dough expanding or rising along with this yeast is also a good supplement of vitamin and it consists 50% protein and is a rich source of vitamin b such as niacin folic acid riboflavin and biotin 
The next ingredient is sugar. Now sugar is as I as in the previous slide it is a food of yeast residual sugar. Like sugar is basically used uh, for uh, for the development of yeast in the dough. But any sugar may be added to bread but in practice we usually use granule castor or syrup type of sugar into bread making. This sugar should be first dissolved in some of the dough water along with yeast. It can work very good. Sugar cane or beet sugar sucrose is colorless odorless dissolves in water very quick. So we, we mostly use sacrose as a, a basic sugar which to be used in bread making. It also provides necessary sweetness, helps in producing a golden brown color of crust, improves the texture of crumb and also helps in retaining the moisture in the bread. The next ingredient is salt. Salt plays a very important role in baking. It is more than just a seasoning or flavor enhancer. Bread made without salt is inspired and flavorless. Therefore, salt makes bread more palatable and appetizing. Adding salt to the dough also controls the fermented and promotes a normal healthy fermentation process. It allows the yeast to grow by itself and Along with this, it also helps in crust, uh, developing the crust of the color of your bread. Also helps in texture, as I said, that it helps in controlling the rate of fermentation. That helps in making a good texture of your bread. The next ingredient is fats and oils. Fat incorporated into the into the flour mixture physically interferes with the development of gluten, creating a more tender crumb. The fats most commonly used in baking are shortenings, unsalted butter and margarine. Vegetable oil and olive oil along with animal fat, lard, are also used in some of the bread making. Fats helps in lubricating the cell expansion of dough and it goes between the gluten strands develop gluten faster, easier and softer to knead. It also helps in increasing the volume of the bread. It also helps in moistening the, the bread while slicing. It helps in uh, cutting a good slice and because it tends to hold moisture retention into it. The next ingredient is milk and eggs. These two also act as enriching agent in the dough making. The function of using bread and eggs are basically these are the improvers of nutritional value of bread. It also gives the gas retention power of dough and helps in producing soft and silky structure. Somehow, it also increases the flavor and taste of your bread. And in some of the breads, it helps in, like eggs, helps in binding uh, agent also. It also improves the crust and water retention power of bread by presenting present of lactose like milk we are using into it. It also enhance the texture quality and keep the product moist and increase the shelf life of the bread. The next ingredient is water. It binds the flour and other ingredients quantity of water in white loaf is 50 to 60% to 100% of water. It gives moisture to the product, distributes dry ingredients evenly into the dough. It helps in developing the structure 
and yes when how if we are using any of the nuts or dry ingredients into it it used to uh, distribute it properly and along with that yeast is also distributed properly by the water bread improvers now what is bread improvers bread improver is a mix of various acid and enzymes that serve to strengthen the gluten in the flour and also feed the yeast both of which yield a better loaf the term is most commonly used to describe a range of natural or chemical additive that speed up the process of dough development they are or can be classified into three groups first can be mineral additives like potassium ammonium gms yeast food like sugar calcium phosphate and enriching agent like milk and others it increases the gluten strength at soft and shiny texture is provided by the bread improver most of the bread improver are like uh, gluten which has been used uh, into the flour while making bread it also increases the product external and internal quality like volume crust of color structure texture moisture aroma grain now what is grain grain is a internal texture of the bread and taste it also improves the nutritional value as i said enriching agents are been also a bread improvers like milk and eggs they increase the keeping quality it also controls the mold growth and helps in increasing the fermentation tolerance this is the table view of various ingredients role and functions by this you can have some quick look for using the ingredients which is available in bread making thank you very much this is the end of this video in our next video session we will discuss about various method used in bread making and various principles of bread making thank you very much